Welcome to part six of the Lead Green Associate Test Prep video series. In this video, we'll be covering the lead requirements for indoor environmental quality. There are two prereqs in indoor environmental quality and up to 16 points in nine credit areas. It's important to identify which spaces are used by the occupants including any visitors, the transients, and what activities they perform in each space. Depending on the space categorization, the credit requirements may or may not apply. All spaces in a building must be categorized as either occupied or unoccupied. Occupied spaces are areas intended for human activities. Unoccupied spaces are places intended primarily for support such as mechanical and electrical rooms, stairwells, closets in a residence, but a walk-in closet is occupied, or a data center raised floor. Occupied spaces are further classified as regularly occupied or non-regularly occupied, based upon how long the space is being occupied. Regularly occupied spaces are areas where people spend more than one hour on continuous occupancy per person per day. For spaces that are not used daily, the classification should be based on the time a typical occupant spends in the space when it is in use. Non-regularly occupied spaces are areas that people pass through. Occupied spaces further categorized as individual or shared multi-occupant, depending on the number of occupants and what they're doing. Examples of multi-occupant spaces include auditoriums, hospital surgeries, hotel lobbies, and classrooms. Finally, occupied spaces can also be classified as densely or non-densely occupied, based on the number of people. And there are tricky spaces, like dorm rooms, which are considered individual spaces, even if they have four people in them. Prereq one is to meet minimum indoor air quality performance. The intent of the prereq is to contribute to the comfort and well being of everyone in the building by setting minimum standards for indoor air quality. There are two kinds of spaces here mechanically ventilated and naturally ventilated. The requirements for mechanically ventilated spaces is to meet the requirements of ASHRAE 62.1. Remember that standard, 62.1 is for ventilation. And provide outdoor air monitors for all larger mechanical ventilation systems. For naturally ventilated spaces, meet one of the three ASHRAE ventilation requirements listed in LEED, and for all spaces, measure the exhaust airflow, indicate natural ventilation openings with an alarm when closed during occupied hours, and monitor CO2 concentrations in each thermal zone. Prereq 2 is no smoking. You need to prohibit smoking inside the building and prohibit smoking outside the building except in designated smoking areas located at least 25 feet from all entries, outdoor air intakes, and operable windows. You also need to prohibit smoking outside the property line in spaces used for business purposes. Signage must be posted within 10 feet of all building entrances indicating the no smoking policy. Smoking includes tobacco smoke, as well as smoke produced from the combustion of cannabis and controlled substances, and the emissions produced by electronic smoking devices. Be sure you know the distance requirements. The first credit is to incorporate enhanced indoor air quality strategies. The intent of the credit is to promote occupants' comfort, well being, and productivity by improving indoor air quality. To meet the requirement for the credit, you have to comply with three strategies for one point or six strategies for two points. So what are the strategies? First, 
you can install entryway systems that are at least 10 feet long to capture dirt entering the buildings. Second, you can exhaust each space uh, where there are hazardous gases like garages and copy rooms by creating a negative pressure between those spaces and the surrounding spaces. Third and fourth, you must use ventilation filters that are at least MERV 13 or higher for filtering outdoor air or recirculated air. MERV filters uh, indicate the size of the particulates that can come through it. Fifth, you can increase the ventilation by 15% above the minimum rate in the prereq. Or six, you can increase the ventilation by 30%. Seven, you can have operable windows in 75% of the regularly occupied spaces. Eight, you can meet a higher level of engineered natural ventilation in accordance with option two of the prereq. Nine, you can monitor CO2 in all densely occupied spaces. And 10, for spaces where air contaminants are likely, you can monitor additional contaminants besides CO2. The next credit is to choose low emitting materials. The intent is to reduce chemical contaminants that can damage air quality, the environment, and the health of the occupants. The requirement is to use materials on the building interior that meet low emitting criteria. Each type of building material has a percentage that have to meet the VOC emissions and content. There are low emitting standards identified for evaluating the VOC emissions and content, formaldehyde, furniture, or salvaged or reused materials. Inherently non-emitting materials include stone, ceramic, glass, concrete, unfinished wood, and others. You can get one point for developing a construction indoor air quality management plan. The intent of the credit is to promote the health of construction workers and building occupants by minimizing indoor air quality problems that happen during construction. The requirement is to develop a construction and preoccupancy plan that meets SMACNA IAQ guidelines. SMACNA is the Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning National Contractors Association. This includes using MERV-8 filtration for permanently installed air handling equipment in accordance with ASHRAE 52.2, which should be replaced right before occupancy with whatever the final design requires. There also needs to be no smoking within 25 feet of the building entrance. Be sure you know the MERV filters and standards and guidelines. You can get a possible two points for completing an indoor air quality assessment. The intent is to ensure the air quality indoors is better so as to improve health, productivity, and well being. There are two options, which are completed right after construction is done. Option one, which can earn one point, is a flush out. Be sure you know the specifics. Path one is before occupancy. You perform a building flush out with 14,000 cubic feet of outdoor air per square foot gross floor area. Path two is done during occupancy. If the occupants want to move in before the flush out has been completed, you can deliver 3,500 cubic feet outdoor air per square foot before the building is occupied. And then after the building is occupied, it must be ventilated at a 0 0.30 cubic feet per minute. CFM. Option two is actual air testing. Conduct a baseline IAQ test for a list of particulates or inorganic gases for one point and or VOCs for one point. You can get one point for meeting the requirements for thermal comfort. This requires you to design HVAC systems and building envelopes to meet ASHRAE 55, the thermal comfort conditions for human occupancy. 
Thermal comfort requires you to consider more than temperature. It also includes humidity and air movement. You also need to provide individual controls to allow occupants to adjust at least one aspect of thermal comfort, temperature, airspeed, or humidity, for at least 50% of the individual spaces and group controls for shared spaces. You can earn a possible two points for providing high quality lighting. You can use one of the strategies for one point, or if you use at least three strategies, you can earn two points, including glare control, an appropriate color rendering or color fidelity index, and an appropriate surface reflectivity. Finally, for 90% of all regularly occupied space, you can provide dimmable or multi-level lighting controls. For shared space, have multi-zone control systems that occupants can adjust, and lighting for presentations are separately controlled. You can earn up to three points for providing daylighting. The intent is to connect people to the outdoors and reduce use of electrical lighting. The requirement is to provide manual or automatic glare control devices for occupied spaces and you can choose one of three options. Option one is to run a computer simulation annually to check the daylight for each of the regularly occupied spaces. You can get one point for daylighting at 40% of the floor area, uh, for 55% two points and 75% three points. Option two is a simulation to calculate the luminance intensity for direct sun and diffuse sky components at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. You need to provide lighting levels between 300 and 3,000 lux at 9 and 3 for 55% for one point, 75% for two points, and 90% for three points. Option three is actual measurement of the illuminance in each regularly occupied space for between one and three points. You can earn one point for quality views. The intent is to give building occupants a connection to nature and other quality views. The requirement is to provide direct, clear, unob unobstructed line of sight to outdoors for 70% of all regularly occupied floor area. Views must include nature, urban landmarks, art, or things that are at least 25 feet from the window. Occupants have to have direct views and be within three times the head height of the windows. The last credit is for one point for acoustic or sound performance. The intent is to design workspace and classrooms with effective acoustics. You can ensure the noise levels are appropriate in at least two areas. HVAC background noise, sound transmission, or reverberation time. HVAC background noise must have levels in accordance with the ASHRAE handbook. For sound transmission, you need to meet building code or composite sound transmission class or STCC ratings. And reverberation time can be considered for spaces in hotels, office buildings, courtrooms, performing arts spaces, labs, houses of worship, libraries, stadiums, and gyms. You need to consider the acoustical impacts of interior finishes, building geometry, and duct insulation. To summarize, some of the strategies you can use to manage air contaminants include no smoking, higher MERV filters, using low VOC materials, testing for radon, installing entryway grates, monitoring CO2, conducting a flush out, and replacing filters, using green cleaning products, and using integrated pest management. And strategies to increase occupant productivity include increased ventilation control, increased temperature control, increased lighting control, increased daylighting, and other strategies that research shows can increase productivity.
You can use occupant surveys, which can cover layout, furnishings, thermal comfort, air quality, lighting, acoustic quality, cleanliness, and maintenance of the spaces to help you gather data on the effectiveness of your strategies. Some additional strategies for occupant comfort include using materials to help with temperature and acoustics, such as using thermal masks to help reduce the temperature fluctuations throughout the course of the day. Thermal mass uses materials that can absorb heat during the day and release it slowly when the sun is not available for warmth. You can also use soft surfaces for acoustic absorption and hard surfaces for acoustic reflection and you can add acoustically attenuated air intakes with heating coils for the winter, and add acoustically attenuated air extract fans for higher levels of ventilation. Some codes that you absolutely need to know. ASHRAE 62.1 and 62.2 for ventilation. The main difference between 62.1 and 62.2 is that 621 is for commercial institutional buildings, while 622 is for residential buildings. And ASHRAE 522 is a method of testing MERV filter. Here's a wider list of the standards, but you still need to focus on the three ASHRAE standards. Add ASHRAE 90 for energy to that list. So 522 is the method of testing MERV filters, ASHRAE 55 is thermal comfort, temperature, humidity, and airspeed, and 62.1 and 62.2 are ventilation. And then you'll want to remember some of the codes and standards for products and materials. Some of these are repeated from the materials and resources video. Green Label Plus addresses low VOC carpet. Green Label looks at low VOC carpet cushions. Floor Score looks at low VOC vinyl, linoleum, and laminate. Squamid looks at VOCs with 1113, looking at limits for wood finishes, floor coatings, stains, primers, sealants, and shellacs. And 1168, looking at compliance for adhesives, sealants, and sealant primers. Green Seal looks at VOC limits for paints and aerosol adhesives. SMACNA looks to minimize air quality issues during construction, renovation, and demolition. And CARB, which is the California Air Resources Board, addresses formaldehyde emissions from composite wood products. In this video, we covered the prereqs, credits, and strategies for providing good indoor environmental quality for people working, visiting, and living in buildings. In the next video, we'll cover innovation, regional priorities, synergies, and the LEED Green Associate testing process. See you then.